Skyrim is widely considered to be the best Elder Scrolls V of all time. And while the game certainly wasn't lacking content when it was released, no self-respecting game developer could resist the urge to make downloadable content that people named Paul would use to drive them insane six years into the future. Can you beat Skyrim's Dawnguard DLC without taking any damage? Unlike Fallen New Vegas, Skyrim's DLC doesn't tell you what level you should be before you start it. Well, Dragonborn might, but Dawnguard doesn't. What I read online suggested being at least level 10 before beginning the DLC's main quest line. So I looked through my hundreds of saves to find the character from my Skyrim No Damage run to play as. In my New Vegas DLC runs, I always made my character as generic as possible by making all the skills an equal level before starting the DLC. Because Skyrim's leveling and perk systems are significantly different from New Vegas's, I decided to not start Dawnguard with an average DAO character. My no damage character seems to have been abducted by Grandma Sparkle as is no longer existing, so I picked one of Shouter McGavin v 3 saves from when I was level 10, started the game, set my max health to 1 so that any damage of any kind kills me, and started shopping for bows, arrows, and anything else that would be useful to a stealth archer. This is another reason why I was okay with playing as this character. Almost all of the skills I'd leveled up are worthless to me since I can't take damage. I met Derek behind the armored beaver, asked him if I could come over to his house to see his new dirt bike, and fast traveled to Riften to begin making my way to Dawnguard. This rain mod sure is cool, isn't it? If you'd like to see more epic mod reviews, don't forget to unsubscribe because I don't make mod reviews. Closer to Dawnguard, it took me a few attempts to kill this elf and manage to steal her horse. I'd somehow made it to the edge of the world, but was also between the fort and my waypoint. This blonde looking feller who was looking for a friend interrupted my walking with his talking. So I put a few arrows in him, reunited with an old friend, got a crossbow from Durek, accidentally hit him in the back of the head with it, took my punishment like a man without any clothes, and arrived at Fort Dawnguard. Isran was in the middle of a conversation when I waltzed through the door. He said there used to be more members of the Dawnguard, but they're not around anymore. His acquaintance told me about Dim Hollow Crypt, and with one of five main quests down, I was already 20% of the way through the story. Before leaving, I found two huskies that were far tougher than I expected, and left to fast travel to Minecraft, since it was the closest place I'd discovered to Dim Hollow. A skirmish took place just outside the entrance, and with my newly acquired crossbow, I cleaned up the scraps and entered Dim Hollow Crypts in search of a seahorse. Almost. The place I thought was Dim Hollow was actually nothing, so I ventured around a portion of the planet and entered Dim Hollow for reals. The first issue was that I kept having problems firing arrows. The second was that there was a death hound. One sneak attack isn't enough to kill them yet, but two quick arrows are enough to get the job done. A few skeletons gave me a good startle when they emerged from the ground. I killed another death hound, a few more skeletons, and a vampire before I encountered the problem that often plagues me in these runs. Horribly timed quick saves. The death dog had me in his sights and I had very little time to act. I screamed it against a wall and retreated back to safety to avoid its freezing bite. After taking it to the permanent pound, another thought to seek revenge for its fallen brother. I sent it to the farm as well, killed the giant spider, and entered the sanctum of Sanctimonious. I dropped the body of someone who had been tortured into the water like I think he would have wanted me to, stabbed myself in the hand and thankfully didn't take damage and solved the vampire's street lamp problem to reveal another vampire that had been sealed away with magic paper. Her name is Serana, and of course I tried to kill her. From the way she talked about Skyrim, I assumed she'd been sealed away for a long time, at least a few hours. As we began escaping, gargoyles attacked. These guys don't mess around. They're big, fast, mean, and could probably fly if they got some exercise instead of sitting in place like statues. I blasted them with mouth heat and retreated to the water to escape their rampage while Serana regained consciousness and did most of the work to kill them. A small arena filled with Draugr were standing between me and whatever else this DLC has in store for me. This took a bit of effort because there were some toughians down there and also quite a few skeletons with arrows. I left one of my buckets with this guy who was getting warm by the fire. Serana and I left and began heading for an island. I was a bit full of myself and tried to off a few Thalmor because they were there and why not. After a few failed attempts, I resorted to annoying them and running away, also known as the Mitten Squad Classic. As if my attempt to kill a group of people wasn't enough of a failure already, I sneezed all the blood out of my nose and went for round two at a bandit camp. Then, uh, yeah, Skyrim. 
I used everything at my disposal to clear the exterior of the camp, looted a box, tried to yell someone off the castle walls, got into another quicksave kerfuffle, beat someone to death with a giant hammer, took in the raw beauty of Elder Scroll V, battled a few walruses, took a boat ride, and arrived at Castle Volkar. Volk Volkahar. Lord Harkon was rambling on about his daughter and a prophecy or something while I was distracted by the magical rolling bloodbone. Then he showed me his true power and gave me a choice. A tough choice. A choice I struggle to make every day. Do I become a vampire or do I not become a vampire? I chose to not become a vampire because I like the crossbows and Dawnguard has better opportunities to be sneaky. He banished me and I returned to Fort Dawnguard to share my great news with Isran. But just as I arrived, a group of vampires attacked. The Dawn Guard did most of the work. Isran might have been a Super Saiyan, I can't really tell because his head is shaved, and he told me that I'd need to recruit two more people to our cause, because two more people are obviously going to tip the odds in our favor when we're up against an ancient vampire lord that has an Elder Scroll. Before setting out on my adventure, I reloaded a save to see what would happen if I went to Dawn Guard while Serana was traveling with me. Nothing, that's what happened. Up first was Gunmar, a simpleton who needed my help killing a bear. I can see why. That bear flew away after it was attacked. Then his friend ate me. The next time around, both bears were turned into trophies to mount on my wall. I picked up a weird looking Rubik's Cube, Gammy joined the party, and I was off to find the next victim. She's right in the middle of everywhere I haven't been, so I went to Catless Farm outside Solitude, found and bought Stupid the Horse V3, and put hooves to dirt as we rode towards whatever her name is. I heard a dragon flying around on my way to her little camp met Sorin, and had to find her a gyro before she'd come with me. I thought I'd left one in Whiterun when I was littering around the city earlier today. I returned, found all my stuff that the guards hadn't picked up yet, picked up my gyro, and fast traveled to Sorin. Turns out it wasn't the gyro, which meant I had to go on a satchel retrieving mission. She said it was somewhere along the river, most likely being used as a shell or a mate by one of the mug crabs. The dragon I'd pretended didn't exist a few minutes ago is one of my mom's friend's kids, so I had to play with him even though he's weird. I used my Become Earthbound Shout to protect myself from his breath on a few occasions, found the bag, gave it to Sorin, and was back at Dawnguard. Sorin wasn't all worthless though, because she can train me in archery. I had lots of gold because I never used it to buy anything in my Shout's only playthrough. She told me about some crossbow schematics, Isran showed me how ineffective he is, seeing as a vampire showed up and he let her in. The three of us spoke in front of Isran's weird looking bed, Serana told me about a prophecy, and we left to find a moth priest that can read an Elder Scroll. My first stop in that journey was the College of Winterhold because it seemed like the most logical place to start. Ogre informed me of a moth priest that was heading for Dragon Bridge. I spoke to a guard about that moth priest and began searching the road south of Dragon Bridge for a half moth, half priest. We were too late. The priest was in a better place now, probably. He'd been stolen. I can only imagine that being tortured by vampires is better than whatever else he had planned for that day. Luckily, where he was being held wasn't all that far away. I entered the cave and began taking out all the creatures guarding the area until I got to where the Mothman was being held. The named vampire is probably supposed to be tough, but sneaking and crossbows are pretty overpowered. Dexian the Moth Priest is another one of those NPCs that can't be killed by conventional means. What he lacks in the ability to die, he makes up for in his knowledge of Elder Scrolls. With the gang back together, I stopped by Skyhaven Temple to blast Delphine down a mountain, before beginning and continuing my search for Sorin's crossbow blueprints. There were a few Forsworn infesting the nearby town, all of whom were quite rude to me. One tried to do a spinner rooney, which seemed like a bad idea when someone's pointing a crossbow at you. His friend got a crossbow bolt in the spine as a punishment for being in the neighborhood, and I arrived at Markarth for what I think is the first time ever in one of these videos. Someone died, I'm not entirely sure what happened. I went inside the building, picked the lock to the excavation site, and began searching for clues. And by searching for clues, I mean I followed the waypoint. Timmy Noosebomb's pet spider had somehow made it into a dungeon in Skyrim. I cleared some web, got a few sneak attacks on some Falmer, and entered the Dwemer ruins. That's when it hit me. I'd gotten nauseous after speaking to Sorin because she said the schematics were in the Dwemer ruins. Thankfully, a small battle took place between the Falmer and Spider workers, allowing me to pick off the survivors, find the schematics, escape the ruins before terminal boredom set in, receive payment from Calcium Elmo, return to Dawnguard, and get a better crossbow from Sorin, as well as up my archery skill again. My next task was to track down Florentius in the Ember Shard Mineshaft. Once I was back in the mine, I slowly pushed through it, killing every bandit I came across. Turns out I'd gotten my quests mixed up, 
This was the quest to find another crossbow upgrade, not fluoride. Florence is hiding out somewhere on the eastern mountains that run along the border of Skyrim and other place. Besides the wolves that ambushed me and another mountain climbing adventure, nothing fun happened on the way out there. There were far more brainwashed vigilantes in Runewald than I was expecting. Not that they posed much of a threat to me, what with the sneaking and the crossbow and the whatnot. Also, there were huskies in this DLC, which really caught me off guard. I eventually found the room where Florentius was being held, killed his captor, tried to kill the man himself, which once again didn't work, and we agreed to meet back at Dawnguard for some tea and... and... and that's the only spiffing Brit reference I've got. Back at Fort Daylight, I upped my archery skill for the third time and told the Moth Priest to go ahead and read the Elder Scroll. I tried to sneak a peek, but screen looking isn't allowed in this dimension. Serana informed me that we'd need to find her mother, Valerica, and to do that, we'd need to sneak into the Vampire Castle. A stealth mission? Are you kidding me? I was fucking made for this! The entrance we took was around the side and guarded by dead things. Then we entered the castle itself and began the long process of pushing through the neglected water tunnels. Enemies are aplenty down here. Demon dogs, feral vampires, hooded skeletons, bear traps, and more all tried, and succeeded, in a few instances, to impede my progress. Once two bridges were lowered, we made it to the courtyard where a puzzle needed to be solved. Luckily, I was on the scene with my incredible intellect and was more than prepared to find the shapes and put them in the right hole. The moon dial activated, a secret passageway emerged, and we were back in the game. The next castle section provided affordable housing to more foes, namely gargoyles, which are still tough and annoying as ever. My usual tactic for dealing with them is a sneak attack with a crossbow, fire breath, and another crossbow bolt while they're stunned from the flames. That doesn't work so well when you're in the middle of a gargoyle dinner party and you're the main course. The strategy guide's recommended strategy is to close the doors and let Serana do the hard work, then open the doors to take a shot or two. It worked like a charm, and before long, we found ourselves in her mother's laboratory, where I gathered an assortment of ingredients necessary to open a portal to the Soul Cairn. Are you ready? Things are about to get fun. There are two ways to get into the Soul Cairn. You can become a vampire, or part of your soul can be captured in a soul gem. I chose to have part of my soul trapped because I didn't become a vampire earlier, no point in being one now. I then entered the soul cairn and dropped dead. When Serana says you'll become weakened, she means it. So the only option is to become a vampire, which sucks. In the soul cairn, I met Serana's mother who was surprised to see me and her daughter, probably more so her daughter than me. She explained that to get an Elder Scroll, we'd need to kill the three Boneyard Keepers that are keepering the magic shield up. They're big and formidable, but surprisingly not the toughest things to kill once you put your back into it. The ghost of Morvan offered to trade me a few items for some soul mushrooms. The second keeper was entertaining a few party guests who all tried to kill me when I showed up without an invite. I got into some trouble with a pack of wild bone men who wouldn't leave me alone. I found Arvel's skull, returned it to the owner, and got myself the immortal steed known as Stupid the Horse Mark II. The last keeper was atop the tallest tower in the land, and was also relatively easy to kill. Before heading back to Valerica, I shouted her daughter off the floating tower to her doom. Couldn't find her anywhere, figured she was probably paralyzed and trapped for all eternity in the Soul Cairn, spoke to her mother, and she led me towards the Elder Scroll. But there's a dragon, because this is Skyrim and there has to be a dragon. This fight was not the challenge I expected it to be. Darnavir rarely did any ranged attacks, and when he did, I used to become an ethical shout to protect myself. The crossbow and my immortal companions helped me slay the beast rather quickly. I retrieved the Elder Scroll, the dragon returned, and told me a sob story about how he'd been trapped in the Soul Cairn for so long. I spent a few years looking for soul sponges to give to Morvel the merchant, realized what a waste of time that was when he didn't have anything useful. I'd left the Soul Cairn forever, and was ready to return to Dawnguard. Conveniently, there's a balcony near Valerica's room, so I didn't have to backtrack through the entire castle. I opened the door, took a step outside, and got roasted by the sun. This is where things started to take a really annoying turn. There are a few immediate problems. The first is that you can't go outside between the hours of something like 5am and 7pm. If you're out there, it's instant death. That might not be the biggest hindrance, just travel at night. You can certainly travel at night, but fast traveling changes things drastically. Fast traveling from Vampire Island to Fort Dawnguard will fast forward time enough to kill you when you arrive. Your best bet for fast traveling is to go into a cave at night, wait for it to get rather dusky, then travel to your destination and immediately get indoors or seek shelter in another cave. It took me about 10 minutes to get from Vampire Headquarters to Dawnguard. 
which allowed me to speak to Dexion and learn that he went blind. I tried to buy more arrows from Sorin, but she only talks to non-vampires, and Isran just wasn't having it at all. With the only moth priest in Skyrim blind as a bat, it was up to me to find the special knife, summon the butterflies, and read the Elder Scroll myself. I'm gonna skim over a good chunk of my misery here by explaining that it took me about half an hour to get from Fort Dawnguard to Ancestor Glade, because everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. It was probably payback for biting Isran before I left Dawnguard. I didn't manage my time properly, I fast traveled when I shouldn't have, which chewed through more time, and I couldn't find a solid place to seek refuge from the deadly laser in the sky. Persistence paid off in the end, as I managed to get into the forest cave, where I scraped the bark off a tree, harvested a horde of moths, and read the Elder Scroll several times, because if I'm going blind, I want to be really blind. Before I could start searching for Ariel's bow, a bunch of vampires and their pets infiltrated the cave and laid siege to me and my army of butterflies. Sneak attacks took care of most of them easily enough, and Serana was an excellent human shield when dealing with the master vampire. The daylight travel problem was back with a vengeance as I tried to march towards Darkfall Cave. I got a few gallops away from a stronghold where I could shield my naked body from the sun, but I dropped like a rock from my horse as soon as the clock struck 5. Another problem was that you can't wait or sleep while trespassing. At one point, I'd managed to get to Dragon's Reach, where I stood motionless for hours to regain my composure. I wised up and traveled in small increments, hiding out in buildings or caves about as often as I could just to make sure I wasn't going to melt. I still had a pretty solid trek to make through the darkness, but my dead horse got me to Darkfall Cave quickly enough. I killed a few spiders, somehow managed to survive, falling into an underground river and over a waterfall to Grandmother's house, where I met Knight Paladin Galibor, who explained to me what a nightmarish experience was waiting for me up ahead. There are more Falmore in my way in this quest than probably the rest of the game combined. And because Falmore are mindless sociopaths, they have Tauruses as pets, or at least live with them in some sort of harmony. These things are like the mutant offspring of a gargoyle, praying mantis, and an armored slug. Also, it gets incredibly dark in some areas, which can only help make this hell a bit hotter. After about 20 minutes of slaying Falmer, I arrived in the first of five way shrines that I'll need to get to. I stepped through the portal to find the next one, and yep, the sun got me again. I waited until the sun had just set, ran through the portal, and started putting my educated feet to good use. Time was of the essence. I wasn't sure if there would be any caves to wait in, so I made sure to get to each way shrine as quickly as possible. I rode my ghost horse past a few Falmer, got to the second way shrine, I forgot to wash out my Gatorade bottle before I started filling it with water, so it's gonna taste like crap, but that's okay because two shrines are down, only three to go. A few spiders provided a momentary setback, my horse made a waterfall look like an overflowing sink, and I was already at the next way shrine. The horse gave his life to let me survive a fall down that waterfall, then he came back to life to suffer along with me. We arrived at the fourth way shrine, the horse screamed as his soul was torn back to the cairn, and it probably screamed again when I called him back to me. The fifth and final way shrine was pretty deep into an icy cave that was just littered with Falmer. Normally I'd take my time to go through this. I did go slow, but not as slow as I would have if I wasn't still terrified of the sun. I couldn't tell you exactly how many Falmer I killed during the 11 minutes it took me to get to the last way shrine, mostly because I didn't feel like watching that footage for 11 minutes and counting. Before I got to the last way shrine, I did a little test to ensure that the sun would still kill me, which it would. I portaled myself back to the cave, where I could wait in the safety of darkness for the sun to leave me alone, and approached the temple. All the Falmer and their pets were frozen, which didn't bother me, since I have no feelings about anything one way or the other. I entered Aurel's chapel, and the other snow elf sent everything he could muster to stop me. And it was quite a lot, several waves of frozen charges and frozen Falmer. Tripping over an icicle, however, is as deadly as anything else I've ever encountered in this run. The elves' last line of defense was an ancient frost atronach, which I took out from afar. He retreated to the balcony, where thankfully it was still dark. Serana got angry when he explained more about the prophecy, and a fight broke out. The arch curate can take a lot of punishment and can dish it out from a ridiculous range. My current strategy clearly wasn't going to work. A close range fight is a death sentence. So I time traveled back about 90 seconds into the past, triggered the dialogue, and hid safely behind a chair while I waited for the battle to begin. He mopped the floor with Serana like she was nothing as I filled him with arrows. He's quick though, and if he gets close enough I have no chance of dodging his sparks. Luckily, I came prepared. I had a potion of invisibility, and a potion that increases bow damage by 20% for a short time. 
Those two potions gave me the edge I needed to land two final crossbow bolts in the arch curate and finally end his life. Gelibor took his portal to the balcony and gave me Aureal's bow. I had him make me a few more special arrows, and I was finally ready to return to Fort Dawnguard and take the fight to Harkon. Almost. I'm gonna end Harkon's reign of terror if it's the last thing I do in this video. But there's no way I'm doing it as a vampire. I set my sights on Falion and Morthal, who can cure vampirism, waited until the day ended from within the safe confines of the Skyhaven Temple, and rode off into the darkness. There was a bit of extreme mountain climbing courtesy of Stupid the Horse, but I got to Morthal, and apparently I committed a crime and had to go to jail. I slept my prison sentence away, emerged from my cell at night, which was what I didn't expect to have happened, and met Falion, who told me he'd need a black soul gem and to meet him back here at dawn. That frightened me pretty good. I thought for sure I was going to be stuck as a vampire forever. So instead of waiting for daylight, I waited in one hour increments, and at 4.30, 30 minutes before I would drop dead, Falion performed the ritual and cured me of my vampirism. Before returning to Castle Dawnguard, I basked in the warm glow of the sun for a few moments, then set off for the castle. Isran rallied the troops, I met up with them at Castle Volcar and began the actual battle for the dawn. I charged the bridge alone and was annihilated in seconds. Ready to use everyone who'd accompanied me as gargoyle bait, I went under the bridge to trigger their spawns. Together we took back the bridge and entered the castle. I did what I could inside, but it wasn't much. It seemed like the Dawn Guard outnumbered them by a pretty wide margin. I then entered the cathedral to finally confront Harkon. I had no interest in a diplomatic victory. I crouched behind him and began blasting him with sun-hallowed arrows from Ariel's bow. I nearly killed him the first time before a gargoyle slashed me in half. The second time lasted a bit longer, but I was eventually killed again. The third time it dawned on me that I could hide up top and stay crouched to not be detected by skeletons or gargoyles. At one point, I was certain I'd finished him, but an arrow hit me, so we both died at the same time. Sometime later, Harkon blasted me into next month with some magic. Another time, he did bad things to me with his mouth, but none of it was enough. I hit the vampire lord with an arrow. He faded away until nothing was left but a puddle of blood. I completed the Kindred Judgment quest, and I beat Skyrim's Dawnguard DLC without taking any damage. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Skyrim's Dawnguard DLC without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Rolf of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.